This is our first picture together. He looks like he's been picked for The Price is Right, and I look like the Phantom of the Opera, like, like right when they pull his mask off. I hid in the quiet parts of the library, which incidentally is where I got picked up for most of my dates. Those Saturday before 10 a.m. library dudes. In contrast, I remember once seeing Matthew before we met, and I know it was him because he was in a zoot suit and a cane, and he was singing and waving to all the people he somehow knew on the third day of school. I distinctly thought to myself, oh, what a gaudy, unnecessary display. Just college, he was already referred to as Matt Pat, but I called him Matthew Patrick, his full first and last name for two years because I didn't want to admit that I liked him. Not exactly a place of honesty. On the other hand, Matthew talked about all the shows he was doing, the group events he had planned, the university level show choir he was planning to found. True story. But most of the time, he actually followed me home alone on the bus and sat next to me and walked me home. And yeah, in 2022, that's definitely stalking, but this was the enchantingly backward time of 2006, so we'll go with endearing. The point is, we wasted a lot of time in the early days, figuring out that it was okay to be ourselves, and if you care about something, you really can't commit to it, like, a little bit. There are no half measures in life and on the internet. You have to show who you really are, even if it means showing that you need someone else, or even a lot of someone else. Matthew tells this story plenty about starting as a barely paid actor, but I was the reason he quit. It's now 2010, instead of touring around with theater shows or weeping about the recession or whatever 23 year olds were doing at the time, there was a lot of weeping. He came to be with me and try to make it in New York. Excuse me, New York. We in New York? Number 52. Urine everywhere. And he kind of knew where he wanted to be. It was a long day for me, discussing the internet's impact on knowledge, whether college is a necessity. But getting there takes time, and he had a couple of jobless years where we couldn't do things like buy Christmas presents. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. Your branches are getting very dry. And in the meantime, he took dangerous jobs, rigging lights in theaters, and working as an outdoor street vendor where he almost got hypothermia. So I had already taken off the gloves, but then you have other gloves underneath. You got a hat, hat, headband, scarf, jacket, jacket, sweater, sweater, thermal, t-shirt, under armor, and an under armor. That's the pile. But you change things, and eventually something starts to have rollers in my hair because my character's name is Curly. I am so unhappy right now. I'm so miserable. And connect them with something you're really passionate about. Click my butt. Watch the next video. While Matthew did a bunch of crummy jobs that paid almost nothing, he also started a web series that he loved. It paid actually nothing, but it was like, oh, we're like a little below the poverty line versus like, we're a little more below the poverty line. So really this channel was just a rounding error. And that was how Game Theory was born. Out of Matthew looking at the data. So unhappy. And seeing that even when your apartment and your job prospects and your bank account all look like a big zero, you can still work towards something. The commitment is going to be worth it down the road. And to his credit, Matthew had to make a lot of commitments, and he made a lot of them for me. When we moved to LA, he had never been west of the mighty Mississippi, and while he has analytics in the bag, I don't think he knew like which one up there was Oregon and which one was Washington. He was pretty sure they weren't California where we were moving. That was as much as he knew. But he followed me so that I could start a career. Hi, I'm Stephanie Cordato. Nice to meet you. That might have been a little too forward. We had never seen tacos for less than a dollar, so we figured LA must be the promise. During this time, Matthew's relatives either believed I had ruined his acting career, or they apologized to me because he was, quote, a bum with no job, and they asked if I was going to dump him before our wedding. While I worked 70 hours a week, his solitary, unpaid internet time got so intense that we had to get Skip so that Matthew would have someone to hang out with during the day. <laughs> <laughs> we can name it fish. Fish. Fish be Flounder. What gets you through the doubters, I think, isn't looking like you have it all together from the outside. It's about having support of people on the inside. But I did make the good call of marrying the kid with no job. And here we are.